Assalamu alaikum. There is a misconception about Islam that is circling around the internet. And unfortunately, a lot of Muslim brothers and sisters are starting to believe it too. Let's watch it together and clarify it once and for all. Bismillah. Allah judges a person not by religion, but by righteousness, faith in God, and belief in the day of judgment. This applies for all people and makes moral clarity in my heart, knowing that God loving and fearing people in my life will see the rewards of heaven. This is the same impression that I got when I read the Quran, that the Sabians, the Christians, the Jews, etc. have nothing to fear as long as they obey one God and they do their good deeds. This gives you a lot of comfort, of course, knowing that your family members still have a chance to get to heaven. Okay. First of all, congratulations to both of you, brothers, for accepting Islam and starting your journey on the correct path. I understand that you're new to Islam and you're still learning and I am in no way blaming you for anything in this video. I'm just trying to clarify a misconception that some hypocrites spread in our society and innocent Muslims started to believe. The spread of this lie is causing a lot of young Muslims to be confused. They send me questions like, what if a Christian who believes in God and does a lot of charity dies? Will he go to hell or paradise? Why? And when I answer them, they say, only Allah decides, not you. Why are you asking me then? And then they bring up the famous two verses. Quran chapter 2, verse 113. The Jews say, the Christians have nothing to stand on. And the Christians say, the Jews have nothing to stand on. Although both recite the scriptures. And those pagans who have no knowledge say the same about the people of faith. Surely Allah will judge between them on the day of judgment regarding their dispute. See? Allah will judge, not you. Maybe they will enter Jannah too. Who knows? And the second very famous verse, which is in Quran chapter 5 verse 69. Indeed, those who attained faith and those who Judaized and the Sapiens and the Christians, whoever among them attained faith in Allah and the day of judgment and has acted righteously, then no fear shall be upon them, nor shall they grieve. See, this verse is saying that Christians will have no fear upon them and they shall not grieve. Whoever is spreading this misconception is using these two verses to pack his point. And this is the most dangerous type of people. The people who spread lies while pretending it's part of Quran or Hadith. That is because some young Muslims believe them. And then our religion changes over time, which is unacceptable. In the end, you get some innocent people, like those two brothers here, who are re-sharing the same misconception, but with goodwill. I think the issue is very clear now, and the plan of this video is that I will present the answer with enough evidence that will never leave any doubt in your heart after that. Not even a little bit. So bring your coffee, and let's start. First of all, we need to understand that as Muslims, we're not allowed to judge anyone and decide his fate. It's God's job to judge, not our job. Deciding if someone will be in paradise or hell is only God's judgment. Wait a minute, isn't that exactly what they are saying? So they are right. And non-Muslims can be in Jannah, right? No. This rule actually disproves their claim. Let's repeat the rule again. I, as a human, don't get to decide people's fate. But God does. So if God says, for example, in chapter 111 in the Quran, that Abu Lahab is kafir and will be in hellfire. And then someone asks me, is Abu Lahab kafir? And I say yes. Did I technically decide that he is kafir? Or did I just confirm my belief in God's judgment? God is the one who made this decision. I'm just repeating the words of God that I read in the Quran, right? Now let me ask you a question. What if someone reads in the Quran that Allah decided that Abu Lahab will be in hellfire? And then this someone says, nah, I don't think he will be in hellfire. I think we should not judge people. What do you say to this person? What this person is really doing is he is rejecting God's decision that is written in a clear verse in the Quran, right? All I can say to him is what God said in Quran chapter 2 verse 85. أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ do you believe in some of the book and reject some? The reward for those who do that among you is disgrace in this life and the harshest punishment in the next. 
if God explicitly said in a verse that Abu Lahab is kafir, you have to confirm that if you want to be a Muslim. Now, if you agree with me that we should respect God's decision, then let's answer the question in hand. Can a non-Muslim enter Jannah? I will give you the short answer first. After that, I will provide all the proof that you need to have no doubt in this answer. God divided people into three types. A Muslim, a Kafir, and Ahlul Fatra. Let's go one by one. Number one, a Muslim. A Muslim is a person who got the message of God through any of his prophets. Then believed in Allah, his angels, all of his messengers, and all of his books, and the Day of Judgment, and Al-Qada'a wal-Qadr. This person will be judged based on his deeds. And based on God's will, this person might be sent to Jannah right away, or to hell first, and then to Jannah later. Number two, a kafir. A kafir is someone who did an action that is called kafar. This word kafar is the same in Arabic and English. Kafar translates to cover in English. The only difference is F becomes V, cover. This is referring to a person who saw the truth but decided not to believe in it or to cover it, cover the truth. Imagine a person who heard that a man is saying that he has a message from God to humanity. This man himself is known as trustworthy, never lied all of his life. And the message he is claiming to be from God is Worship one God, be good with your parents, don't cheat, don't steal, take care of your hygiene, take care of your health, be successful in life. Something like that. And he's not asking anything for himself. And he's providing evidence to his claim in the form of miracles that people can witness at his time. And scientific and informational miracles for people in the future. The man sees all that, and instead of deciding to read the message, he decides to cover it. Pretend it doesn't exist. Thinking it's better for me to cover it now so I won't have to change my lifestyle or to face a society. The moment he covers the truth, he becomes kafir. And God decided that this person will be in eternal hellfire. Doesn't matter if he's atheist, Jew, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, all the same. If he or she got presented with the truth and rejected it or covered it, then hellfire is the destination. Number three, Ahlul Fatra. This is referring to a person who didn't get the message of Islam, like a person who was born between prophets, or a person in the Amazon jungle who have no idea who God is, or an old man who got the message very late in his life, he doesn't have the mental capability to understand it. Or a person who heard a manipulated version of God's message. Like, for example, a person who learned a manipulated and corrupted version of the message of God, like the people who learn about Islam from Western media, lies and propaganda. These people technically didn't get the message because all they know about Islam is that people say Allahu Akbar and they explode. They have no idea what Islam is. So anyway, all of these people are called Ahlul Fatra. And God decided that they will neither go to paradise nor hell. They will have to undertake another test in the hereafter. And based on the result of this test, the second test, God will decide their destiny, whether it will be in hellfire or paradise. And no, this is not reincarnation. Remember that the Day of Judgment is 50,000 years. So there is a lot of time for those people to undergo another test instead of this one. Again, guys, I'm not judging anybody or deciding their fate. I'm saying what Allah decided and revealed to us in Quran and Hadith. Don't forget that every Muslim should submit his will to God and respect God's decision. By the way, before we continue, I want to remind you that it is our fault as Muslims that all of these millions in the world didn't get the message of God. Please refer to our video titled Why Every Muslim Should Do Da'wah for more details about this matter. Also, before we talk about the evidence, let's answer two questions. People get so emotional when they ask about a disbeliever who died and he did a lot of good in his life. For example, he did charity or he made a scientific discovery or he built a successful business or anything else. Asking Jannah for this person is ridiculous. Let me tell you why. As Muslims, we believe that the reward is based on intention. There is a huge difference between someone who does charity for the sake of Allah and someone who does charity because he likes when people praise him and like him. He likes it when people think he's a good man. 
we say that everyone will get what he asked for. The first one asked for Jannah, he will get it. And the second one asked for appreciation and love from society, he will also get it. And everyone getting exactly what they wanted is fair. I will give you another example so you can understand it. In my country, the government is not doing much for older people. When I get old, I'm expecting my son to take care of me, physically and financially, to get me a doctor when I need, to hold my hand when I can't walk. Imagine if when I am old and I really need my son next to me, he completely ignored me and he left me to die. But at the same time, he's a good man. He's helping another old man down the street. Is he a good son or a bad son? He's helping another man, so he's doing good, but he left his father to die. This is a very tough question. So let me ask another question that is easier to answer. Can this son come to me and ask me for reward after he ignored me? Or should he go ask for reward from the other old guy that he was helping down the street? Of course, I'm not comparing that example to God. But I need you to understand that it is ridiculous for someone who is praying to a statue of Mary to go ask Allah for reward in the end. It is ridiculous for someone who is worshipping a cow to go ask Allah for reward. Go ask the cow. If you are worshipping a human prophet, go ask the human prophet for reward. If you are worshipping a god that rested in the seventh day and wrestled with Jacob and lost the wrestling match, go ask this god for reward. If you want reward from Allah, why don't you submit to him now instead of rejecting him all your life for no reason? The second question is, my family member or my close friend or whatever is kafir. Can I pray for him or for her? If he's alive, yes, make dua for him, pray for his guidance every day and give him da'wah as much as you can. But if he dies as a kafir, never ever pray for his forgiveness because that will be a sin. As you disrespect God's decision that whoever dies as kafir will be forever in hellfire. You're telling God, you know what, I disagree with your decision that you revealed in the Quran. And I want you to change a verse in the Quran. You, you can't do that. This is, by the way, according to the consensus of Salaf and modern scholars. Because this will be a rejection of Quran chapter 9 verse 130. مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِيِّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ كَانُوا أُولِي قُرْبَ It is not proper for the Prophet and the believers to seek forgiveness for the polytheists, even if they were close relatives, after it has become clear to the believers that they will be bound for the hellfire. Now, it's finally time for what you've been waiting for, the evidence. Bismillah. Quran chapter 3 verse 91. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارُ فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ مِلْءُ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبًا وَلَوْ افْتَدَى بِهِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ Indeed, of each of those who disbelieved, kafir, then die as kafir, were to offer a ransom of enough gold to fill the whole world, it would not be accepted from them. It is they who will suffer the painful punishment, and they will have no helpers. Quran chapter 2, verse 161 and 62. إن الذين كفروا وماتوا وهم كفار أولئك عليهم لعنة الله والملائكة والناس أجمعين. Indeed, those who disbelieved kafir and died while they are kafir, upon them will be the curse of Allah and the angels and the people altogether. خالدين فيها لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينظرون. They will be in hellfire forever. Their punishment will not be lightened, nor they will be delayed from it. Quran chapter 4 verse 18 وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ وَلَا الَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارِ أُولَئِكَ أَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Repentance is not accepted from those who knowingly persist in sin until they are dying and then cry, now I repent, now I repent. Nor those who die as kafir. For them, we have prepared painful punishment. Quran chapter 59, verses 16 and 17. كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان اكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك 
إني أخاف الله رب العالمين فكان عاقبتهما أنهما في النار خالدين فيها وذلك جزاء الظالمين Like the example of shaitan When he said to the man be kafir But when he became kafir the shaitan said It's not my fault that he became kafir I fear Allah the Lord of the worlds So they will both end up in the hellfire Staying there forever That is the reward of the wrongdoers From these verses we established That whoever becomes kafir Will be forever in hellfire Again Anyone who takes the title kafir is forever in hellfire. Now let's see who is kafir according to the Quran. It's not us who's gonna judge anyone. I'm saying God decided that this person is kafir. Open Quran chapter 5 verse 72 to 75. Let's read all of them. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بِنَ مَرْيَمْ وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أعبد الله ربي وربكم إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار They have certainly disbelieved Kafir Those who say God is the Messiah the son of Mary While the Messiah said O children of Israel Worship Allah my God and your God Indeed he who associates others with Allah Allah has forbidden him paradise And his refuge is the hellfire. And there is not for the wrongdoers any helpers. This is not me judging the Christians. This is a verse in the Quran. Next one. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَ وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا إِلَهُ وَاحِدٍ Those who say Allah is a trinity have certainly disbelieved. Kafir. There is only one God. If they don't stop saying this, they will be afflicted with a painful punishment. أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Will they not repent to Allah and ask for His forgiveness? For Allah is forgiving, bestowing of mercy. Let's continue. مَا الْمَسِيحُ بِنْ مَرْيَمْ إِلَّا رَسُولٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ وَأُمُّهُ صَدِّيقَةً كَانَ يَأْكُلَانِ الطَّعَامِ انظر كيف نبين لهم الآيات ثم انظر أن يؤفكون. The Messiah, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. Many messengers had come and gone before him. His mother was a woman of truth. They both ate food. See how we make the signs clear to them. Yet, see how they are deluded from the truth. Again, this is not me judging them. These are verses in the Quran. And based on these verses, you either have to confirm God's judgment and say Christians will be in hellfire, or say, I disagree with Allah. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ لَا يَسْمَعُ بِي أَحَدٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ يَهُودِي وَلَا نَصْرَانِي ثُمَّ يَمُوتْ وَلَا يُؤْمِنْ بِمَا أُرْسِلْتُ بِهِ إِلَّا كَانْ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ I swear to God, if any Christian or Jew heard my message and died without believing in it, he will be forever in hellfire. This is Sahih Hadith. Let's read more. Quran chapter 5 verse 11 لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بِنَ مَرْيَمْ قُلْ فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُهْلِكَ الْمَسِيحِ بِنَ مَرْيَمْ وَأُمُّهُ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا Indeed those who say Allah is the Messiah son of Mary are kafir. Say O Prophet Who has the power to prevent Allah if he chooses to destroy the Messiah, son of Mary, his mother, and everyone in the whole world together? Let's read more. Quran chapter 5 verse 18 وَقَالَتَ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَى نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاؤُهُ قُلْ فَلِمَا يُعَذِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ The Jews and the Christians each say, We are the children of God and his most beloved. Say, O Prophet, why then does he punish you for your sins? No, you're only humans like any other human of his own making. After reading all of these verses, there is no way you will deny that a Christian is a kafir and will be forever in hellfire. But what about people who believe in one God only, but do not follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him? For example, Unitarian Christians who are saying the Father is the only true God and Jesus is his messenger. But... Do not believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Will that person go to Jannah or not? 
And the answer is in Quran chapter 4 verse 150. إن الذين يكفرون بالله ورسله ويريدون أن يفرقوا بين الله ورسله ويقولون نؤمن ببعض ونكفر ببعض ويريدون أن يتخذوا بين ذلك سبيلا Surely those who deny Allah and his messenger and wish to make distinction between Allah and his messenger saying we believe in some prophets and we disbelieve in other prophets and wish to adopt a way between that أولئك هم الكافرون حقا وأعتدنا للكافرين عذابا مهينا They are indeed the true kafir and we have prepared for the kafir a humiliating punishment والذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ولم يفرقوا بين أحد منهم أولئك سوف يؤتيهم أجورهم وكان الله غفورا رحيما as for those who believe in Allah and all of his messengers, all of them, rejecting none of them, he will surely give them their rewards and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. From these verses, whoever believes in Allah and 99% of his messengers is kafir and will be forever in hellfire. That covers all types of people who don't believe in Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him, including Unitarian Christians, Trinitarian Christians, Jews, and any other fake religion. Want more evidence? Okay, let's continue reading. Quran chapter 3, verse 85 and 86. Whoever chooses a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be among the losers. Quran chapter 3 verse 108 يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O you who have attained faith Be mindful of Allah in the way he deserves And do not die except as Muslims Quran chapter 3 verse 20 فإن حاجوك فقل أسلمت وجهي لله ومن اتبعني وقل للذين أوتوا الكتاب والأميين أسلمتم فإن أسلموا فقد اهتدوا وإن تولوا فإنما عليك البلاغ والله بصير بالعباد So if they argue with you Say I decided to be Muslim to Allah And so have my followers And ask those who were giving the scripture and the Gentiles Have you decided to be Muslims to Allah too? If they say yes we want to be Muslims They are rightly guided But if they turn away Then your duty is only to deliver the message and Allah is all seeing of his servants. Quran chapter 2 verse 111 and 112. And they say none will enter paradise unless he has been a Jew or a Christian. These are their fantasies. Say show me proof if you are truthful. Quran chapter 2 verse 137 فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So if they believed in what you believe in, then they will indeed be rightly guided. But if they turn away, they are simply opposed to the truth. Allah will spare you from their evil, for he is all hearing, all knowing. And if you are interested in verses referring specifically to the Jews, let's read Quran chapter 2 verse 91. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ قَالُوا نُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَيَكْفُرُونَ بِمَا وَرَائِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعْهُمْ قُلْ فَلِمَ تَقْتُلُونَ أَنْبِيَاءِ اللَّهِ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ When it said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they reply, we only believe in what was sent to us. And they deny what comes after it. Though it is the truth confirming what they believe in, ask them, O Prophet, then why did you kill Allah's prophets before, if you are truly believers? Quran chapter 2 verse 79 فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بَأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا فَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ so woe to those who distort the scripture with their own hands. Then say, this is from Allah, seeking a fleeting gain. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they have earned. Quran chapter 3 verse 98 قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ 
لما تكفرون بآيات الله والله شهيد على ما تعملون Say O Prophet, O people of the book Why do you deny the revelations of Allah when Allah is witness to what you do? The Arabic word for deny here is kafir. Let's end with this one. God said in this Qudsi hadith. قال الله تعالى كذبني ابن آدم ولم يكن له ذلك وشتمني ولم يكن له ذلك The son of Adam denied me and he had no right to do so and he insulted me and he had no right to do so تكذيبه إياي فقوله لا يعيدني كما بدأني وليس أول القلق بأهون علي من إعادته As for his denying me it is his saying he will not remake me as he made me at first and the initial creation of him is no easier for me than remaking him وأما شتمه إياي فقوله اتخذ الله ولدا وأنا الأحد الصمد لم ألد ولم أولد ولم يكن لي كفوا أحد As for his insult to me it is his saying Allah has taken to himself a son while I am the one, the everlasting refuge, I begot none nor I was begotten, and there is none comparable to me. Related by Al-Bukhari and the Nasai. Hope it's clear now. Of course, there is much, much more verses and hadith talking about that, but it doesn't make sense to make this video two hours long. So I think that is enough. Now let's address the two misquoted verses. First one is Quran chapter 2 verse 113. وقالت اليهود ليست النصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يتلون الكتاب كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم فالله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون The Jews say the Christians have nothing to stand on and the Christians say the Jews have nothing to stand on although both recite the book and those pagans who have no knowledge they say the same about the people of faith Everyone is making claims. Surely, Allah will judge between them on the day of judgment regarding their disputes. There is nothing in this verse that is saying it is okay to be Christian or to be a pagan or to be a Jew. It is simply saying that all of these people, Christians, Jews, pagans, everyone, is just making claims. And on the day of judgment, Allah will judge them. Then the question is, what will be God's judgment in the hereafter? And he already answered this question in all of the verses we already read together from the beginning of this video. So you already have the answer. The second misquoted verse is the one that Bobby misquoted. Quran chapter 5, verse 69. Let's hear it from him first. Bismillah. Surely those who believe, and those who are Jews, and the Christians, and the Sabians, whoever believes in God and the last day and does good, they shall have their reward from their Lord, and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. Let's stop it here, okay? So, can anyone point out where exactly did he make a mistake? Before I say where the mistake is, you give it a try. Pause the video, think about it, and write down in the comments below. Okay? Let's listen to it again together. Surely those who believe, and those who are Jews, and the Christians, and the Sabians, Whoever believes in God and the last day and does good, they shall have their reward from their Lord, and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. He's saying what? He's saying, surely those who believe and those who are Jews. The mistake is in the verbs. The verbs are not in present tense. Both verbs. It is not those who believe. It is those who believed. And it is not those who are Jews. It is those who were Jews. Let's read it correctly this time. In past tense. Those who believed, past tense. And those who were Jews, again, past tense. And the Sabians and the Christians, whoever among them, not all of them, no, whoever among them, decides to believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment and do good, there will be no fear for them, nor they will grieve. This verse is simply an open invitation to all of those people who were in the past, Jews, Sabians, whatever, Christians, in the past. It is an invitation for them to believe in Islam now. This verse is not saying there is no fear on them. No. This verse is saying whoever decides to believe only, those people, they will have no fear on them. Don't want to take my word for it. Let's open the tafsir together. 
open the English version of Tafsir Ibn Kasir from the Quran.com. It's available for everyone. Let's read together this part. The meaning here is that if each of these groups believed in Allah and the hereafter, which to be so, must conform to Muhammad's law after Muhammad was sent to all mankind and the jinn. I think it's very clear. And by the way, they get the same message from Allah in different chapters too. Like for example, Quran chapter 5 verse 65. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَكَفَّرْنَا عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَأَدْخَلْنَاهُمْ جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ If only the people of the scripture had believed and feared Allah, we would have forgiven their sins and admitted them to Jannah. See, clearly, they will get forgiveness if they believed. Believed in what? Believed in their own book? Of course not. Because they already believed in their own book before this verse was revealed. This is an invitation to them to believe in the last revelation, saying if, and this is a big if, if they believed this message, then they will be in Jannah. You can also find the same meaning in Quran chapter 98. It was not until this clear proof came to the people of the book that they became divided about his prophethood. Part of them believed the prophet and the other part rejected. So what happened to each of these groups? Indeed, those who disbelieved from the people of the book and the polytheists will be in hellfire forever. They are the worst of all beings. On the other side, those who believed and did good, they are the best of beings. I hope this chapter makes a clear distinction for you between the people of the book who decided to believe and become Muslim and the people of the book who decided to reject the Prophet and become kafir. By the way, before I recorded this video, I tried to reach Bobby in every way possible. I sent him a lot of messages and commented on his videos. I, I couldn't reach him at all. I was trying to talk to him in private first instead of making a video publicly like that. So if any of you can reach him in any way, send him this video because I'm sure that he doesn't want to spread false information to thousands of viewers. And I'm sure he was just confused. In the end, remember that the Prophet said, deliver my message even if as small as one verse. So don't let this video stop with you. Share it with your friends and also help it spread by engaging with it with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia law, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.